I really first started watching Terrace Marshall when he had 11 catches for 225 yards and 3 touchdowns against my Missouri Tigers. That broke a couple of LSU records and Terrace Marshall became a household name during the 2020 season. The dude's a stud player, he passes the eye test, and he was a big time recruit coming out of high school, so NFL expectations have always been on his back. In my opinion, Terrace Marshall is the most underappreciated wide receiver prospect in this year's draft, and I think he'll be a steal for any team that uses him, and he'll be a player that plays for a long time. Everyone talks about Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, but Marshall barely ever gets recognized for his talents, and he is going to be a really, really good player in the coming years. In today's video, we're going to touch on his story, how he became a big-time player to begin with, his time at LSU, and what makes him such a great prospect for this year's draft. Now let's go ahead and get started and talk about Terrace Marshall Jr. In case you didn't know, his uncle is named Joe Delaney, and he was a star football player who would go on to play in the NFL for two years. He died before Terrace was born, though, as he saved three kids from drowning in a pond, which was very admirable of him. Terrace was born and raised in the bayou of Louisiana, and was always a talented athlete. He was always very religious, positive, and fun to be around, and he was the kind of dude that you just wanted to associate with. All his friends, teammates, and coaches knew he was going to be a big-time player, as he was a great athlete and just a dude that everyone knew had all the potential in the world. He went to Parkway High School and was expected to be a star, but he was going to go through some tough things and he had lessons to learn about life first. He broke out onto the scene as a freshman, but he would get injured. Right before his sophomore year, his grandfather would pass away and that devastated him. Right before his junior year, his grandmother passed away due to cancer and that is just tough. This all inspired him though and made him work harder and he said that he plays for her. A few games into his senior year, unfortunately he could not go a year without having something bad happen as he would get seriously injured during his senior year. He was still a big time prospect though and schools from all around the country wanted him. He had been electrifying at Parkway as he caught 55 passes for 1,250 yards and 15 touchdowns as a junior and had over 1,300 yards and 14 scores as a sophomore. He was not the only big time player on his team as former blue chip quarterback Justin Rogers was his teammate and he committed to TCU so some people thought he could go there and combine the fact that LSU was not known as a passer friendly team, maybe he could become a horn frog. He said, quote, he wanted to go somewhere where they threw the ball. We knew they didn't throw the ball, but his heart was with LSU the whole time, and that's where he wanted to be. So yeah, he was the consensus number one player in the state of Louisiana, and he was going to take his talents home to LSU. He ultimately committed them over Texas A&M and TCU. He joined four-star recruits Jamar Chase and Keenan Jones in his class, and according to 24-7 Sports, he was the 13th overall recruit, a five-star recruit, the number three wide receiver, and the 287th best player of all time, which was pretty good for all that happened to him. In year one with Joe Burrow, no one really knew what to expect. He catches first career pass against number eight Miami in a game that was pretty good to open up the year. He catched two passes in their win over number two Georgia, and would catch a season-high three passes against Rice. He finished the season with numbers that weren't exactly flying off the page, and he wasn't much of a factor to be honest. He catched 12 passes for 192 yards and no touchdowns, which didn't exactly, as I said, pop off the page. People knew he had serious potential though, and the LSU on the other hand didn't really suffer without him as they went 9-3 in the SEC. With Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase getting all the spotlight going into the 2019 season, Joe Burrow would break out and Terrace would kind of become the third option. The roster was loaded, but no one expected what they would become. He catched three touchdowns in their first win against Georgia Southern, and Marshall put his name out there. He had 100 plus yards and a touchdown in their thrilling win over number nine, Texas, then he'd have two more touchdowns against Northwestern State, and he was the team's best wide receiver for the first few games. But things would get tough as he would get injured against Vanderbilt, and that was the game that Jamar Chase went off, and Terrace Marshall would miss four games, and he sort of fell behind. He played well the rest of the year and had two touchdowns in their game against number four George in the SEC championship game, and they would clinch a college football playoff berth. He had two touchdowns in their win over number four Oklahoma, and then he had a huge touchdown in their win over Clemson. Joe Burrow would win the Heisman, Jamar Chase won the Blitnikoff, and Justin Jefferson was a superstar who was going to be a first round pick, and sadly, Terrace Marshall got overlooked. As a sophomore, he'd finished the year at 46 catches for 671 yards and 13 touchdowns, and may I remind you, he missed four games. Going into 2020, everyone expected him to break out alongside Racy McMath. Jamar Chase opted out of the season, and it was going to be Terrace's team. And against Mississippi State in the first game, he had eight catches for 122 yards and two scores, but KJ Costello had the game of his life, and the Bulldogs upset LSU. Against Vanderbilt, he would rebound as he had two catches for 67 yards and two touchdowns, and then he had the game of his life against Missouri, as he'd have 11 catches for 225 yards and three touchdowns against my Missouri Tigers. The receiving yardage was the fourth highest total in program history, and his 11 catches tied for the seventh most in program history as well, and his three touchdowns was tied for the sixth most in a single game by an LSU player ever. It wouldn't stop there though, as he had a great game against South Carolina, as he'd catch six passes for 88 yards and two touchdowns. 
get his worst game of the season against Auburn, but by this point, there was a quarterback battle between TJ Finley and Max Johnson, as Miles Brennan was done for the season after an injury. He'd have a solid game against Arkansas, but where he'd play his final game of the year against Texas A&M. He finished his Tiger career at 10 catches for 134 yards and a touchdown, and then he opted out himself. He finished the 2020 season with 48 catches for 731 yards and 10 touchdowns, and everyone knew the kid was a special talent, and he was going under the radar in terms of draft boards. In a wide receiver class that includes Jalen Waddell, Devontae Smith, Jamar Chase, Rondale Moore, and Rashad Bateman, Terrace has put himself right in the mix to be a first round pick. Here's what the scouts have to say about him. With that group off to the NFL, Marshall took over as the Tigers' number one receiver in 2020, but he had to play with multiple quarterbacks, and the offense took a huge step back due to also losing the offensive line talent to the NFL. The junior totaled 48 catches for 731 yards and 10 touchdowns across 7 games, but he decided to end his season early. In a normal season with just an average quarterback, Marshall could have produced a massive year because he was playing at a very high level. There's a lot to like for Marshall as a potential starter in the NFL. He has good height and is fast. While Marshall is more of a build-up speed receiver, he stretches defenses vertically and can really challenge defenses downfield. In the deep portion, Marshall's speed catches defensive backs by surprise, and he can create separation for a big play. Marshall's smooth speed and size make him difficult to cover, and he is a real threat to score or produce a big game on any reception. After the catch, Marshall is a tough runner who will use his size to break tackles, and he has a nose for the end zone. As a pro, he should be a quality red zone weapon. Like the vast majority of prospects, Marshall has points of improvement to develop as a pro, as he did not run the entire route tree at LSU. Thus, Marshall need to work on his route running and improve his technique as a route runner to make up for his lack of twitch and suddenness coming out of breaks. Marshall does not have bad hands, but they're not good either, and he needs to improve that to be more reliable at the NFL level. So yeah, that's what Walter Football had to say, so you can check out that full scouting report down in the comment section. Marcus Spears also had this to say about Marshall. Quote, it was thought that he'd be the number one guy before Justin Jefferson, who we saw go crazy in Minnesota, and obviously Jamar Chase being slotted ahead of him in the draft. But he is a big, physical wide receiver that can make plays and go up for 50-50 balls. I think somebody is going to get a steal with Terrace Marshall Jr., and we'll be talking about him as one of the better wide receivers as a rookie. So yeah, as of right now, he is seen as the little brother to Jamar Chase in this year's draft, but I personally think he is just as talented as Chase, and part of me likes Marshall more, but that's just my gut feeling, and I really have no backing to that statement. But, but when he played against Missouri, he was spectacular, and he had that it factor, and I just think he has the drive to make it big. But feel free to disagree with my opinion down below, and let me know what you think of Terrace Marshall Jr., and how he will translate to the NFL. To quickly rewind, he was a big-time prospect coming out of high school and didn't live up to expectations as a freshman, but he would blow up as a sophomore, but injury would hold him back, and he was overshadowed by two other All-Americans. He became the go-to guy in 2020, and at times looked like the best wide receiver in college football. But he ended up opting out of the season and get ready for the NFL Draft, where he's projected as a second-round pick right now, and maybe a late first-round guy. So yeah, that's today's video, and let me know what you think down below. Let me know another prospect I should do next, and let me know your favorite wide receiver in this year's draft. Be sure to check out my Instagram, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, hit that like button, and check out my other videos on the end screen, including my draft profile on Jamar Chase. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.